What's up guys, Standard Lifestyle, we're gonna add a strong and functional step to some rock sliders. This episode is brought to you by Empire Abrasives. The cost of big fabrication projects goes through the roof for most of us, and I try to save money in as many ways as possible. Empire Abrasives can save you a ton of money on consumables like flap discs, cutoff wheels, and grinding discs, and the best part is you don't have to stop your project and go to the store. Just order what you need online, and you can save an additional 10% if you're a first-time customer with the coupon code DIRTLIFESTYLE. In this video, we're gonna do a job that is perfect for those of you who are new to fabrication, and that is take an existing part and improve it. These sliders are definitely custom fab units, and they came with my 2003 Land Rover Discovery whenever I bought it. The biggest flaw, of course, is that they built a step onto these sliders with no center support. So one trip down the Rubicon, and these became bananas. Yesterday, I took a few minutes to cut off the damaged step and grind our surfaces smooth in order to prep them for the work we're gonna to perform today. In the off-road community, we've seen a little bit of an evolution in rock sliders and steps over the last 15 or 20 years. When I started wheeling 17 or 18 years ago, this is what we saw most commonly, and it was just a straight piece of tube, and then you had a piece of tube with two little bends in it, and you'd notch a couple really short sections in between to give you some center support, so whatever obstacle you're leaning on doesn't just bend this bad boy in. Now, this is super popular still, you'll still see it all over the place, but it is much less common these days than it was you know, 18 years ago when I started wheeling. This was like 99% of the rigs that I saw. Somewhere around 10 to 15 years ago, you started to see this style and this style become much more popular. And the idea here is that if you have a really large obstacle that you're sliding on, this can help kick it around your tire. Uh, and that works really good for big obstacles, but for small ones, it, it's a hindrance. And I'll talk about that here in a second. But this is the same basic design in terms that are in the fact that you still have these little chunks of tube in here to give it some center support. Now, about 10 years ago, I started to see dimple dies just explode. And dimple dies have been around forever, don't get me wrong, but this just this style started to explode big time around a decade ago. And instead of having these little chunks of tube in here, use a chunk of plate, so it doesn't have to be thick. I usually use eighth inch, and you drill holes in it, you punch some dimple dies through there, and it looks awesome. It's super off-road, it's really functional as a step, and it's still super popular today. People are using this style, I'd say more commonly than this style these days, but you still see a lot of both. And if you wanna go with this style down here, you can still do the same thing. People will just take flat plate, drill some holes in it, punch it with some dimple dies, and it's, it's all good to go. Now, the reason that I don't usually in, integrate these styles into my builds, even though it's my favorite look, is because I've been on the trail multiple times now with people that have this style particularly, and if you have a small tree or something that the muddy trail has made you lean into, this will just fall in between your tire and your slider. And in order to get you out, because you can't go forward from your tire, you can't go back because of the shape of your slider, we usually have to take a high lift jack or something, jack up the side of the vehicle and figure out a way to, to get that out of there. I've also seen people have to cut down trees in order to be able to get out. So that's, that's a problem, it's kind of a pain. And it, to me, it's not worth the occasional benefit of this kicking a really big rock or something away and around your, uh, around your tire. To me, I like this style. This is what I have on my TJ and this is what I plan on using today. Because if you have that same instance where the tree kind of gets stuck on your tire, all you have to do is back up and this will slide it back over here. And you can usually just back out of the situation and no one's having to get out tools or anything to get you unstuck. So this is the style that we're gonna aim for today. I'm gonna spice it up a little bit to try to make it uh, a little more unique than what you see in the picture. But I basically design on the fly. And if you guys watched my channel before, you know that I will go into this with an idea in my head. We'll see what actually comes out um, in the real world. And I'm gonna find out what it looks like whenever you do.
using today is eighth inch wall thickness. So this is six inch wide by eighth inch wall plate. And this is inch and three quarter tube by eighth inch wall. If you've watched my channel before, you have seen me show you a couple different ways to uh, figure out how and where to place your bends. Well, this is another one. This is just another backyard way. Um, usually I like to mark things on the floor, but in this instance, we're gonna mark it on the table. So I've got this little dummy piece here. I know that I want this to come in contact 57, 57 inches away from over here. So I just pulled a measurement off the corner of the table over to here, and that is 57 inches right there. This, my, this line right here correlates with this part of the die. So I made a mark right here because that's where I'm going to place the tube uh, that we're gonna bend into the die. And then I flip this around over to here. I want this to be pretty close to 57. And then I, make, I made a mark right here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take a measurement full length of this piece of tube. I'm gonna divide it in half and then I'm going to split this difference on that center line. So that center line, or this distance right here, ends up being 35 and 3 quarters, and we are going to split 35 and 3 quarters, make a mark where we're gonna bend right here, and then a mark where we're gonna bend on the other side. The machine I'm using to bend this tube is from JD Squared, and it's a modified unit with a air over hydraulic ram from Harbor Freight. There's a kit you can get from Swag Off Road, and that is how this has been modified in order to use air to bend the tube to the specifications we need. Now I'm gonna bend it to a 48 because of a little bit of spring back that's gonna bring us back to a 45, and I think a 45 is a really nice smooth taper to help these sliders get around obstacles. With the tube welded onto the side of this slider, we are ready for the next step, as it were. <laughs> Pardon the pun. We're at four inches to center off of the edge. And whenever you're building this kind of stuff, you just measure one side, one side, just keep going through, make sure everything's level. And I, I made sure it was whenever I cut it on the table. And uh, it looks great. Everything looks like it's gonna work out perfect. So the next thing I wanna work on is what I call the webbing. Now, as you can see on these old sliders I made a billion years ago, um, I just used uh, basically, what is that, four holes to keep it simple. Well, we're, we're gonna be using a lot more holes today. We're gonna be testing out some new product. I, um, I talked to my guys over at Swag Off-Road because I have this hydraulic notch out, or knockout punch set, but all of the dies that come with it are for pipe size, not tube size. Swag Off-Road makes a set of dies, or punches rather, that are for tube size, and that's what we're doing today, is we're doing tube size. So these tube sizes correlate perfectly with their dimple die set. And now that I have both, I can hopefully get a lot of large holes taken care of without using hole saws. So that's what today is gonna be all about, is trying to make, um, I mean, we're gonna make a lot of holes, way more than four, because we're gonna be um, doing holes around the outsides to just spice it up and make it look cool. And it's gonna be really nice to not have to deal with all that dust and debris and everything that is associated with hole saws. The first thing I need to do is lay out the webbing in a way that looks aesthetically pleasing. This is not something that I can help you with, unfortunately. As the old saying goes, there's more than one way to skin a cat, where well, there's definitely more than one way to build a slider. So the style that I'm into right now is a bunch of half holes that I will basically make right now on a piece of webbing that is wider than what we need. This is a six inch wide piece. We only need four inches. And then I'm gonna be cutting a bunch of those holes down the middle with the plasma cutter. I know that right now, for those of you are new this sounds a little strange but you'll see what I'm talking about as we go along further in the video
the material just sitting in here. Nothing's welded yet, but you can see that it's starting to take shape. This is an extremely simple, extremely basic design. There is no tricks here. Um, you did see me use a couple specialty tools like dimple dies, but those can be had relatively cheap. You can do what I did and just buy one die at a time for 70 or 80 bucks. And then you can start to make some really good looking parts with these tools that you invest in. So this realistically could be made with a Harbor Freight bender. You could absolutely make bends like that with a Harbor Freight pipe bender and a welder and a grinder. And then if you get a hole saw and one of these dimple dies, you can make really good looking parts with basic tools. I have nice tools. I'm constantly investing in upgrades and that's why I have the ability to uh, build this stuff relatively quickly. Now, if you watch that montage closely, you will notice that I overwhelmed this, this machine on the first hole. It did not want to punch through for us. Um, not the end of the world. What, this is one of the reasons that I brought my hydraulic press out here because I didn't think that this was gonna be up to the task for all of those holes <laughs> and all of the dimples. What I'm gonna do in the future is I'm going to use this for aluminum and thin sheet metal. And then anytime I wanna do, uh, I wanna punch into some thicker steel like we did in this project, I'm just going to get a bolt that fits in here, cut the, the head off of it, and I can use that as a little alignment dowel for whenever I'm punching material in the future. But this, seriously, this shaved off three quarters of the time. I mean, this I easily did this in a quarter of the time that it usually would take me to drill all those holes. The next thing we're gonna work on is welding. I wanna make sure that since all my welds are gonna be exposed, that I put in a little bit of practice on the exact size material and the exact type of material that I'm gonna be welding because I wanna experiment with, um, I've done this on a few other projects and I think it looks really nice where you just kind of do a little bit of a spot weld and then you go over it and then you stop and you go over it and you stop and you go over it and you just work your way down and it'll start to look like a stack of dimes. So I'm gonna practice a little bit on this piece that way it's gonna give me the opportunity to set the machine up correctly. And then I'm going to apply these things, all this practice on the piece that we're trying to build. I think the first batch looks the best. It was just kind of like, get it started, pull it over like three quarters of an inch, stop, go back like a quarter of an inch, boom. They just do the little three quarter inch segments. I think that that looks the best. I mean, this one doesn't look too bad and this is literally what I was talking about. It's just like a spot weld. I barely drag it at all. And then just spot weld, barely drag it at all. So this is probably like quarter inch worth of movement. And then over here was just the same as this. I just held on a little bit longer to see what it looks like when it's a little bit fatter. I think I'm gonna go with this first technique and see how it looks. Sure is a lot better looking than the bananas that I cut off of there. <laughs> you can take a look over here. That is some bent tube. So since there's no center support, it, it took nothing to bend those. But now we've got some extra strength. We've got a lot of strength. We didn't add a whole lot of weight. As you can see, there's a lot of airspace in there because we cut so many holes. And uh, I, I think that it turned out great. This turned out very similar to what I was looking for in my head. And I think that it matches our rack, which is something that's really important to me because as I build parts for this disco, I want them all to complement each other and for it to just look good as a whole. Now, I know I'm gonna be getting a question as to why I didn't invert the dimple die like I did on the rear bumper of this Jeep truck. If you look really close, you're gonna see a bunch of inverted dimples and those are great if you wanna step on it and get some extra traction from your boot and uh, that would be very practical for this build, but I want it to look good and in my personal opinion, a dimple like this looks way better. So 
It's that, it's that easy. I was willing to sacrifice a little bit of uh, functionality in order for this to look the way I want it to look. Looks are not important to everybody, but they're definitely important to me. Thanks for hanging in there until the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I've got a whole bunch of how-to content on here. Sometimes it's just buildy, vloggy type stuff like this, but I have a lot of off-road and fabrication content to offer, so check it out if you're into that kind of thing. If you want to help support the channel, you go to thedirtlifestyle.com. We have t-shirts, hats, net gaiters, stickers, all kinds of stuff, and we have a link to our Patreon account as well. If you want to follow me on social media, I'm at Dirt Lifestyle Nate. We'll see you next time.